Hi everyone. Kermit. Mold made from Kermit. Kermit is matte finish, so the mold is matte finish. So I made one from the mold and then gloss coated it. And now we're going to make a mold from this. So we end up with some gloss Kermits. So silicon at the ready. Let's go. I'm also going to do this little dragon. Too cute. Now you can see what I've done here to make sure he sits safely on the base and doesn't float up is I've sat him into some plaster. Now I'm going to do the same with this one. So I've mixed up some perfectly ordinary plaster at Paris. That'll give me a nice flat base. And also the frog is a bit too big for this pot. So I need to raise him up in it. So I'm just going to chuck all that in there and let it dry. And while that's drying, I'll tell you the plan. Now, as you see, um, that'll be just the right size now. If I sat him on the bottom, he was touching the sides because this pot is tapered. So there we go. Now, that's going to take a little while to, to dry. Um, probably, I'll probably leave it an hour to be fair. Um, then when that is dried, I'm going to come up, we'll mix the silicon up together. I've got the um, silicon rubber from Collect Resin. This is genuinely the only one I use nowadays. It's really good stuff. So we'll be using that. It's a one-to-one -one, so it's nice and easy. And I might put a bit of colour in it, make them pretty. And I'm going to try putting silicon through my debubbling machine because everybody seems to be doing that and it seems to be working. So that's the plan. I'll be back in a bit when that has cured. Right, that's that's solidified pretty much, but I managed to mark the surface. But it's also occurred to me that with this little guy, I sat him slightly into the plaster base. So I'm going to do the same with this one because it'll stop any floating. I don't think it'll float anyway, but also it'll give it a nice finish to the bottom. There you go, frog. There we are. And that also means I can wiggle him around and make sure I've got him so that he will get a bit of silicon all the way around so there's a bit of wiggling about required here there got him fairly central that's that just gonna wait for that to cure now right back in another half an hour or so <laughs> Okay, so I'm mixing up the silicon. There's 100 millilitres there, or just slightly over in fact, but um, it's a one-to-one -one silicon which makes life nice and easy and it does dry as you see it here. It's kind of semi-translucent sort of. If you're making small and thin moulds, ultraviolet light will pass through it. Therefore, it's really, really good for um, making moulds with if you're going to be using ultraviolet curing resin. For all moulds, it cures nice and soft, it seems durable, it stretches quite nicely as well, so things that are difficult to get out of moulds, as I have a sneaky feeling this little dragon is, um, is going to be, then um, yeah, it's really good uh, silicon. And I say, it's the only one I use nowadays. I've used silicon putty in the past, I've used cheaper silicons that uh, cure pink and things like that, all very good. But I keep coming back to this one because even if it's a bit more expensive and um, and I don't necessarily need it to be okay for you and using with ultraviolet lights, it still strikes me as an exceptionally good silicon. And although I've managed to introduce some bubbles to it, it clears its own bubbles really fast. I'm still thinking I might put it through the debubbling machine just for a bit of fun. <laughs> Now remember, if you're mixing up silicon, don't mix it in a silicon pot because you'll never get it off the pot. Silicon sticks to silicon so very, very well. I tend to use this big measuring jug and then every so often when it's built up on it a bit, I peel it out. <laughs> okay, that should be mixed up pretty well. So I'm just gonna go and stick it in the debubbling machine just for a bit of fun as much as anything else. And uh, I'll see you when I come to pour it in. Don't know whether that'll be enough, but uh, it's a start, if not. I was going to colour it, wasn't I? 
yeah let's make it pretty coloured because we're not going to need these to, to be UV reactive are we let me just show you how we do that it's nice and easy show you purple look at that oh, lovely oh, this is going to go everywhere isn't it the minute I take the lid off that's what always happens purple frog mould why not indeed <laughs> Right, gonna mix this in, shove it in the debubbling machine and uh, I'll show you what it looks like in a second then we'll pour it into the mould. Oh dear, I have made a mess. It was all very unmessy till I got the purple out, wasn't it? Badly behaved purple. <laughs> there we go, purple mould. And we'll know we've got a purple mould of the frog and the little dragon. Right, going to pour it around the little frog first. Just pouring it really slowly. Apparently if you pour it from a height it knocks the bubbles out. Not that there should be any in it now. But we'll see. And yeah, I am going to end up mixing more up. I always find it takes a lot more silicon than you think it's going to. You can of course save up pieces of scrap silicon. To kind of act as space fillers. I usually do that, but I have actually run out. So, just gonna let this run out and then I'll top him up, top them both, well, this one up, and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the demold of the mold. How's that then? Right then, let's get some demolding of the mold done. What have you done, this little guy? I've liberated him. And uh, I haven't done the other one yet because the frogs wanted to see. So we'll have a go at using this mould in a sec. And uh, let's get this one out. I'm just going to loosen the sides slightly. Now, this is just a yoghurt pot. Or was it a trifle? It was something like that. Um, so I'm going to just cut down it because we may as well wreck it. Could get a craft knife and do it, of course, but... This is just as easy. Now, because I don't want to score all the outside of the mould, I'm hoping I can get away with just that cut and then peel the rest away. So, let's pull him away from the plaster. Silicon doesn't like plaster, so it'll come away from there quite easily. You won't get the, a glossy, perfect finish on this side, probably, but, you know, hey. And here comes the frog. We have liberated the frog. Right, let's give that a wipe up. But as you can see, it's shiny in there. Whereas my original frog wasn't. Actually, that doesn't look bad around the top, does it? <laughs> well, I'm going to give these a wash then. Make sure they're nice and clean and there's none of the plaster in there. And then we'll get some we'll get some resin in there and see how they come out. Now that's going to be slightly textured because, of course, I painted these frogs with uh, UV resin. So this, it might not be perfectly smooth, but it's a lot shinier than the original mould, which was completely matte because this guy's matte. And I also need to get this frog off here, although I might leave him because that might be quite handy to make more with. Right, back when I've had a good clean up of these. Right, back with my resin. Hopefully these are have dried out okay. Bit disappointed that I've got like a little bit of a, a bump there in the back of that one. There must be a little bump on the back of that frog. But it does illustrate the fact that if you start with a shiny surface of what you're moulding from, you'll get a shiny mould. Might have another go at some point. <laughs> to be honest, you can't see that on a glittery frog anyway. So it depends if I'm going to make glittery frogs, doesn't it, really? Now what I'm thinking is, um, actually, let's go for olive green because we've got lots of sparkly frogs we've got the original bright green frog there's, a, there's actually a glow in the dark one somewhere as well let's see if they can all come and see look but i've got this olive green mica powder um and this was from that uh, resin so i'm thinking let's just do that i've got some greeny colored color flip ones as well that i ought to try at some point haven't i <laughs> i'm just having a bit of a giggle with a frog that's a nice colour for a frog, isn't it? 
make sure we've got that mixed in well. I'll be back with you in a moment. This is a very froggy colour, so let's pour it in. So this is the one-to-one -one resin from uh, Just For You Online. It's called Apex. Not a commission or anything, obviously. <laughs> I didn't buy this stuff. And it's really good. Isn't that a nice green? Now let's see if we can do this without getting any balls in the dragon as well. Don't take much resin these two. This is 40 millilitres doing the both of them. I'm going to give the... Actually, before I go too crazy here, I'm going to give the little dragon a bit of a squidge. Hoping I've got down into all the nooks and crannies there because he's got those little spikes and things. I probably should have half filled it and given it a poke around first, but we'll see. Let's hope. I could have a little bit left, aren't I? There we are, look, get into his little toesies and things. Right, so I've got a little bit left. Look, um, I've had a tiny skull mould arrive today. Let's see if I've got enough to fill that up because I want to see what it looks like. Right, there we go. So, uh, I'll see you for the demold of these. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> have a look at this little school while we're at it. <laughs> see you in a few hours. Okay, folks, it's demold time. 24 hours later. Left them for a good long time. Right, let's do... It's just because cause, cause I'm curious. Let's have a look at the little school first. <laughs> This mould is really quite hard for a small small mould. We should spray some release spray in it. Oh, blimey. This is going to be quite hard to get out, I think. I can always spray something down the sides of it. I've got a little bottle of water that I do that with sometimes. Got some release spray. Ah, oh, blimey. Here he comes. I don't usually do schools. I find them a bit morbid. don't like it. But I saw this little mould and I thought, well, it's little, it's cute. Probably put it on key rings, that sort of thing. Oh, she's quite sweet, I suppose. <laughs> that green's nice. <laughs> right, let's do the dragon. Hmm. A little bit soft still after all this time. It shouldn't be. I wonder if I messed up the mixing. Oh, I don't know. Just around the edges, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just where it needs peeling away, right? The overpour. Isn't <laughs> cute? I'll colour his eyes in before I take some photos for you. <laughs> Mould, successful. And purple. Right, here we go. Kermit mark. One, two, three. There's a glow in the dark one in my bedroom. So this is Kermit Mark 5. Again, a little bit of overspore to get off. And as long as this is mostly shinier, I'm happy. Yay! Shiny! <laughs> really nice. So there we go. There's the solution to your shiny mould issue. Um, if you've got dull moulds and you want to make a shiny thing instead, make yourself a sh an original. Lacquer it in some way to make it shiny. And then make another mould. <laughs> Again, before I take photos of him, I'm going to uh, gonna colour his eyes in and stuff. So I'll have some photos up for you later. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. If you've liked this little video, I uh, hope, hope you found it a bit of fun. If you give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. And if you wish to subscribe, the buttons are in the usual place down below. Shout out to my channel members. Bye everyone. See you soon everyone. Bye.